I'm Carl Mills. Welcome to Violin Construction Video 9. In this video, we will be discussing the assembly of the body parts, the top to back plate, to the sides, and joining the neck. We start with work completed in the previous videos, ready to be assembled into one unit. This is to allow for the uninterrupted flow of work required to assemble the body. It is important to understand that during the construction of this instrument, or any other string instrument, hide glue is the only glue used for the construction. First, we start off by inspecting the parts, the top plate, the back plate, and the neck assembly for any errors or damage done while awaiting assembly. Correct those problems and make sure that you are ready to continue with the assembly. Check both top and back plates for any surface irregularities where the glue joint will be to the rib assembly. Double check your edge thickness on the side of the plate so that you know for sure that you are at the correct height. Check your purfling groove for any damage or loose purfling. In preparing to glue the top plate to the ribs, go ahead and flat sand the plates both top and back plate. The flat sanding should just clean any dirt or foreign objects that are on the plate off so that you can have a nice tight glue joint. I have temporarily placed the rib on the top plate. Lined up the center line with the center line of the in block and neck block and drew temporary registration marks in pencil at the corner block locations. Upper and lower bout locations to give me a guide when I glue the plate to the ribs. Put a small portion of glue on each block and rub it in, thereby sealing the end grain of the block. This is called seizing. I will now glue the top plate to the ribs. I will let this set up for 24 hours before I proceed to the next step. I now have to separate the lower portion of the mold from the ribs and the blocks without damaging the plate. Normally, what I do is I take a skew chisel, insert it in the area that's split at the block that holds it to the fixture, and slowly work it down in there without putting any side stresses on the rib. Normally they just pop right out like, just like that one did. That's the paper tearing. And then you have to do the end block and the neck block. I use my finger as a stop so that I don't push through into the top plate. Okay, end block is loose. As you do this, try not to cut the inside of the rib. I now have all the blocks loose. Put two fingers under the mold and press on the neck block to lift it up slightly. Do the same thing on the end block. Do not want to push on the top plate at all.
pop your corner loose and continue working around in a circle and that separates the mold fixture from the rib assembly and the top plate. I will now put in the linings in the lower bout, center bout, and the upper bout in the same manner discussed in a previous video. Here I have prepared the linings for the back plate to be installed by cutting the slot in the corner blocks and notching out the end and neck blocks and the other end of the corner block on the upper bout and lower bout. Double check your glue joints to make sure they are secure and not loose otherwise you will have a buzz in your instrument. Here I have prepared the linings and fitted them. They are ready to be glued in now. The important thing to remember when installing the linings is not to distort the side shape as you get them in position. Remove them and refit them if there's any opening anywhere along. the rib material and the lining material. You want enough glue on there to have a little bit of squeeze out. You know, I actually pull the lining right to the side. The lining doesn't pull to the side which is the pressure from a closed pin. You need to take it out and refit it with no additional stress built into the side joint. The linings are also another way to adjust your air volume inside the instrument. Before you start this, make sure that you have everything ready so that you can go with no interruptions. The linings for the back plate have been completed. The glue set up and I've checked all the gaps to see if there's any loose glue joints. When shaping the inside of the corner block, you must insert a little piece of wood at the bottom of that block so that you prevent yourself from damaging the top plate. I use a low angle skew straight chisel.